guys, it's been a while since my last tutorial video, but I wanted to have a video up this weekend, so I decided to continue the series with this technique. Now, I invented this trick a long time ago, actually for the Domino's vs. Rube Goldberg's screen link. So, here's what it looked like. Now like I said, it's been a while since I invented this trick, but I never got around to posting a tutorial for it. Until now. I actually recorded a tutorial for this trick back in December, but I never got around to editing it, so I decided to record it again because I thought it would be silly to release a video now that has Christmas lights strung around the table. Now let's bring in the actual model. So here it is. It looks pretty complicated, but I'll be sure to walk you through step by step on how you build it, and I'll also include tips and tricks along the way so you can incorporate this into your own Rube Goldberg machines. So without further ado, let's take a look at the materials. So as with all of my Kinex contraptions that I've told you how to build over the course of my tutorial videos, um, this one is going to require Kinex obviously, so if you don't have a lot of connects at home, you probably won't be able to make this. And that being said, if you do have a lot of connects, these are very common parts, so you will probably be able to make this. So now let's go through a list of all of the different connects pieces you're going to need. You're going to need one small blue spacer, two gray connectors, two gray spacers, two black pieces, one semicircular yellow connector, four circular connectors. There are two different colors that I have, so I'm not going to say which color because you might have either. Um, one green connector, three short white rods, one straight orange connector, eight short green rods, three blue rods, six medium length yellow rods, two blue end caps, and three red connectors. Also, you're going to need one small tire and, of course, the Kinex motor. So now let's get started with the actual building of this contraption. Okay, so for the first step, the obvious place to start is to just take the motor. Okay, so we're going to be using this motor and modifying it throughout this entire process. So we're going to put that over to the side for just a second because we're going to make another structure uh, first. So we're going to take two of the circular connectors, okay, and we're going to take one of these very short green rods, okay, and we're just going to stick it in between to connect both of them. All right, so a pretty simple structure here, okay. Then we're going to take the motor again, and we're going to take our other two circular connectors. Yours might be the same color, mine are different, and I'm going to stick them on the side and line them up with the little, uh, little prongs or the little pegs on each side, okay. So now, what we're going to do is take the other two green connectors, we've still got four more, but take two more green connectors, and place them aiming down from the connects, from the, the ones on the connects motor, so just like this, okay? And then we're going to take these, this structure we just made, and put it in there, just like that. So now we've got this crazy looking thing, but this is going to help support the entire structure later on. So, now on to the next step. So, once you've got this built, you're ready to add the legs. This is what's going to be supporting this entire structure. So, you're going to take four of these yellow rods, and you're going to stick them coming out of the, the circular pieces attached to the motor, just like this. Okay, so that's one side, all right? And on the other side, same sort of thing. One and two. But you're still going to need two pieces in the middle to support the middle section, so that's why we're going to take two of the white rods, the short white rods, and stick them on either side here. So there are actually six legs to this entire thing that's uh, supporting it up, and um, there you go. There are the legs. So the next step is to make the support for the back section, because right now it's kind of just hanging off the end here. So what we're going to do is create a couple of segments that extend back to here, and uh, here's what we're going to do. So the first one, we're just going to take a simple yellow rod here, and we're going to place it extending back from the first circular connector there. And on the other side, we're going to make, we're going to take one of these yellow connectors, stick a short green connector or rod on one side, and a blue rod on the other side. Okay? 
and that's going to go right in here just like that. Okay, so now we've got two segments extending onto the back. All right, now to seal that off, what we're going to make is we're going to take one of, or two of actually, two of these gray connectors and connect them together with another short green rod. So we're just going to make this simple little thing. Stick it on the end, it should be the perfect length, just like that, line it up with the holes. And then the correct spacing, we're going to use two of the spacers. So one, one of these gray spacers, we're going to stick on the blue end because it's longer. And a, another, uh, the other blue spacer, this is a lot shorter, we're going to stick on the yellow end because it's a little bit shorter. And then to cap those off, we're going to take two of the end caps, the two blue end caps here, and stick those on the end. Okay, so that's just going to hold the motor in, and it's going to secure it on the end. Okay, so now let's go on to the structure that actually helps turn the Kinex motor on. Now we're going to make the structure that allows us to reach up to the top and get the right angle and height on this switch. Okay, so we're going to move that back for just a second so I can show you what we're going to make here. We're going to take one red connector and one short green rod, stick that in just like that, and then take one blue rod and stick it up just like that, okay? And this is going to go on this side right over here, okay? And it's going to extend upwards, all right? So we're going to stick this back here for a second again, and now we're going to take one red connector again and one short white rod, stick it in just like that, and that's going to go on this side just like this, with the red piece facing inwards, okay? And now we're going to take the gray spacer, this should be the last one, stick it on top of the blue rod right there, and then we're going to take the red, final red connector, snap it in just like that, and slide it down as far as it'll go, and then to final, and then to finalize this, we're going to stick the green connector, or green rod rather, in the middle here and connect it to this one. Now this is going to create one weird looking angle, right? and it should connect pretty easily, but it's going to look very strange. But I assure you this is exactly what we want, because that's how we're going to get the angle that extends in this direction so we can get to the switch on top. Alright, so now let's go to the next step. So now it's finally time to make the structure that allows us to reach the switch. Okay, so we're going to take first a blue rod and stick it coming, coming upwards from this uh, yellow connector right there, okay? Then we're going to take the green connector and stick one of these black pieces in one end. Then we're going to take a green rod, the short green rod, stick it in there. Take the orange, the straight orange connector, stick it in there. And then finally the other black piece and stick it in the end just like that. So this is actually the perfect length to stick right in this gap, okay? Now keep in mind that this was angled by this red piece here, so this is going to be the perfect angle to stick in the black piece, okay? Now it looks strange now, but hopefully we will be able to straighten it out when we snap this end in there, all right? Now slide this down as far as it'll go, all right? And now we are done. Basically, this end is going to naturally fall where it should. Of course, it is still free to move up and down, but uh, this is actually free for you to move and figure out where you best want it uh, based on the machine you're incorporating it into. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave it right about there. Okay, so this is how we're going to get to the switch. We're going to stick another piece into here and angle it downwards so that, so that we can get to the switch. So now let's make that part. It's a very simple construction. And the last part is very simple. We're just going to use the final uh, yellow rod and the tire. Stick the tire on the end just like that. And then slide it through the hole and it should connect to the switch. All right. So the way to make it contact the switch, all right, instead of just sliding through like that, is to actually slide it out just enough and then tilt it more than enough and then as it's and and then as we're trying to make it contact the switch, tilt it down, and then it should just slide in just like that and hold right there.
Okay, now I think you can probably see where this is going, but we're going to have something heavy come down on this end and then turn on the switch just like this. Now, I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out how to incorporate this technique into your own Rube Goldberg machines, but I will give you one tip. The ball that comes down and hits this tire needs to be pretty heavy. I've found that I was able to make it work easily with a golf ball. As always, feel free to use this technique in your own Rube Goldberg machines. If you do, I want to see what it looks like, so send me a link in the comments. I'm Jack of All Space 98 and I'll see you in the next tutorial.